Hi, I'm Dan Goubert, an enterprise solution consultant here at Domo, and I'm really excited to show you how these new capabilities can help organizations achieve enterprise scale. Let's get started with adrenaline data flows. As an enterprise solution consultant, I work with large corporations to help them sift through the billions of rows of data that come in on a daily basis to help them make better decisions, whether it's top line or bottom line. So let's think about a sample use case here. We're an analyst team looking to understand the order history of a retail organization. That's a highly transactional data set and very voluminous. And when we start to look at this and explore the data itself, we can see that we have a 14 column, almost 2.3 billion row data set. That's huge. If we were to take a look at the data itself, we would see that it's composed of timing data, it's composed of location data, and it's composed of product data. And we can begin to understand how we're gonna go ahead and start to write this query that we're gonna go ahead and test adrenaline data flows out with. As we look at adrenaline data flows, we already mentioned that it's SQL being in injected into the adrenaline engine. We can see here, we're in the adrenaline data flow area. Here we see that really large data set, again, almost 2.3 billion rows. And here, a simple SQL query. Basically, we're taking that product, timing, and location dimension, and then we're wrapping it up with the summarization of our expected revenue, our actual revenue, and even creating a variance. And this is what we're gonna go ahead and inject into that adrenaline engine. Let's go ahead and see if it's really that fast. So as we go ahead and run this, we can see from prior runs that I only have 47 seconds to kill max. That means I have enough time to show you what it looks like if I was trying to do the same massive data set with typical SQL solutions. So here we can see up above, we have a Redshift SQL solution and a MySQL SQL solution. And these are great ETL capabilities. However, they're never geared at big data. And we can see from the error messages, MySQL, it ran past 24 hours and timed out. So it never even finished running. Redshift? didn't fare much better. It never even was able to completely load the data itself. So here we can see why we want to have adrenaline data flows. It helps us tackle that big data challenge. So coming back, looks like I spent enough time talking. We're already done processing that query. We just went through 2.3 billion rows of data and we cut it down to almost 10,000 records. Now, I have the data that I want to do my analysis with. Now, under a minute, I can go ahead and start doing the true analysis. I can look at my variance and my trends. Did my actual revenue meet my expected revenue? How about from a timing perspective, year over year? How about from a product perspective? Was one product better than the other? Or even a location perspective? were certain geographies more successful in achieving their revenue goals or not. Magic ETL is a solution that my customers know and love. They use it all the time to bring lots of data together, normalize it, integrate it, and deliver business views that they can start to analyze. I think they're really going to like the new Magic because it makes things simpler and more efficient. Let's take a look. Starting with the use case, Here's something that's familiar to almost any organization I work with, return on ad spend. It's the perfect use case for Magic ETL. Why? You have disparate data sources coming together, all the different vendors that you're getting your clicks and impressions from. You have to normalize the data. You probably want to integrate it if possible to your campaign information so you can see how effective each campaign was. And you need to spit it out in a way that you can start to analyze it and build visualizations off of it. If we were to look at Magic ETL, the new version, what we'll see is something very similar and familiar. So we're not gonna just shock our customers. Instead, we're gonna ease them into the beautiful simplicity that we've woven into the new solution. So 
If we think about that return on ad spend, here we have multiple data sources, Google ads, Facebook ads. I have agencies dropping files in S3 for me to pick up and I have agencies emailing me. And that's where all of the connectors come in to drop that data for me to work with. I also have to factor in my marketing campaign information. So when we think about all this information coming together, now I can start to see why Magic ETL is a great solution in general. But here, the new Magic ETL allows me to simplify. For instance, our agency data in the S3 bucket that I'm pointing at, it takes three steps for us to normalize it. We want to select the data. We want to go ahead and create a constant column that we can slice off of. And then we want to go ahead and calculate the click-through rate. If I look at the data that was emailed to me from the agency, I'm actually doing the same thing except in less steps. So I'm still selecting the data I want, but with this new formula tile, this is a real game changer because I can do multiple steps inside of a single tile. What's more, I can create my own custom expressions that help to accomplish the tasks that I want, no matter how complex. When we think about having to bucket data, for instance, maybe we want to turn some of our marketing programs into seasons. So we can have a winter, spring, summer, fall season for our marketing programs. That work is made quite simple using this formula tile. What's more is I can leverage that work and pass it to another formula, which makes it even easier because I don't have to rewrite anything. So again, we're really just evolving the capabilities in the new Magic ETL. We're building upon the great things that the original version gave us and giving you much simpler, cleaner ways of transforming and integrating your data. When we look at being able to filter out data, we're somewhat limited to how complex our filtering rules could be. Formulas are now even woven into our filters as well. So no matter how complex they are, we can actually write an expression or a formula that allows us to filter out or filter in the data that we want to work with. But perhaps what's most exciting for our customers, mine in particular, is the ability for the Magic ETL to transform itself into Integration Studio. And what I mean by that is that not only do we create pipelines with Magic ETL that can go ahead and output data for analysis inside of Domo, but it can deliver that same data to the point of impact a business needs, whether it's a business system like a CRM, whether it's a data lake, so think about all those IT data strategies where we need to get data in there, or even a data warehouse. And what I'm talking about is right here. As I click on this right back tile, I now have the ability to go ahead and take that same data and put it where the business needs it. It's no longer just in Domo. People can't complain that, well, it's in Domo and I can't get to it. Now I'm delivering it right where you need it. The same data I'm using, I'm giving to you. Again, business system like marketing automation or CRM, IT data strategy in the form of a data lake, or even just dropping it into a data warehouse or data mart for another analysis tool to pick up. This is why I'm so excited about the new Magic ETL. In my role, I service some of the largest customers, pharmaceuticals, banking and financial services, insurance. And these are some of the toughest customers when it comes to locking things down. In other words, they want to have a great deal of governance to ensure we're not going to mess things up in production when we're still mucking around with ETLs back in development. And this is where our new capability sandbox really comes into play. And this is something I'm really excited about because now I have a capability I can have a really good conversation about with these folks. And what this does, in my opinion, it gives us just-in-time governance to make sure that as I'm developing and making changes in development, I'm not messing anything up in production. Let's take a look at a use case here. I have a CRO forecast. 
This is what our chief revenue officer is going to base critical business decisions off of. These are all the forecasts coming in globally from all the different teams. This data can't be wrong. And it really emphasizes the point of these IT teams I work with at my customers. We just can't mess the data up because we're making huge decisions off of this. And so when we think about the data flow behind this, you know, we're pulling in quoted data from an Oracle system. We have a form that we're filling out to do our forecast. We're using Salesforce to bring all that opportunity data in. And as we start integrating this and we start doing some dynamic calculations and start integrating it in different ways, it can't affect what we've already done and what the CRO is already basing his or her decisions off of. So I get it. I really do. And this is where coming to our sandbox capability, we can start threading that governance or that just-in-time DevOps to give us that ability to segregate our dev work from the decisions being made off of production. So what we're looking at here is a repository in sandbox. It's a way for us to go ahead and encapsulate different assets data flows, views, cards, stories. So whether we're doing content development or data engineering, I can put them into a repository and version them and then decide when I want to promote them to another stage, be it test or production. If we look at the repository I set up for my ETL I just showed, I'm simply versioning a data flow. Simple in concept, powerful in reality, because as I make changes to that data flow, I can capture the new versions. So that means I can revert back if I ever need to, and I can promote forward as the IT teams I work with like to do. What's even more powerful is that I can promote across instances. Think about that. I can have multiple Domo instances in a single organization, dev, prod. This is what most enterprise organizations are asking for. So when I jump over to my production instance, and as I navigate here, we can see the same repository that I just showed you in dev. And what's powerful about this is now I do have the concept of promoting across Domo instances so I can segregate development work from production, and I can protect business decisions from trying to come up with an innovative new way of working my ETL. Simply clicking the Promote button allows me to bring that data flow that we looked at into production. And now I have a new asset that plugs in transparently to what my CRO is already using. Now they're getting the enhancement that we've already developed, that we've already tested, and we know is fit for purpose. So Sandbox becomes a really valuable tool when we talk about governance. And as businesses make more and more critical decisions off of the analysis that we have in Domo, having a capability like this is going to be huge. We talked about Sandbox in the context of data engineering, updating an ETL, and then promoting it into production. However, Sandbox also supports more of a content development paradigm, meaning that I can put my cards and stories into a repository as well, so I can iterate on those. Because after all, they are a development effort unto themselves. What's more is I can also engage in approval process, whereas now I can ensure that it's not just up to me to hit the promote button, but instead I can have an approval chain that we navigate until we get the green light to move things into production. So Sandbox really does give us that ability and freedom to innovate while really giving us strong governance when needed. Domo has spent the last 10 years helping our customers achieve their modern BI goals at enterprise scale. And one thing we've learned over those past 10 years is that there will always be new challenges.